Are you suffering with a herniated disc and are nervous that it's just never going to get better? I got you. Hey y'all, I'm Dr. Van, your no BS chiropractor. There are three things that a person, in my opinion, needs to do in order to get back to the best function possible uh, and relieve their symptoms. Number one, you could say I'm biased, but chiropractic. So the cause of a herniated disc, people talk about a slipped disc. The disc does not slip. It is connected to the vertebra above and below 100%. So the disc by itself cannot move. What moves is the bone, the vertebra. So if a bone simply misaligns, and, and, and in our terms, a subluxation is a, is a big medical term, but it simply means a, a slight dislocation, not a full dislocation, a slight, I should say a slight misalignment of the vertebra. We're talking millimeters. It's not a massive misalignment. It's, it is not a dislocation, but a slight misalignment of the vertebra. And this is enough to disrupt normal function. And the simple way to say it is when that bone shifts, it puts abnormal pressure on one part of the disc, which makes it bulge out on the other side. It's like if you had an Oreo cookie and you squished one side, you may bulge out the, the center on the other side. Same kind of idea. So it begins from a misalignment um, of one of the vertebra. Chiropractic, if done correctly, would address that misalignment and at least take the original cause away. Now, is that enough? Sometimes, yeah. Actually, a lot of times, I would say. That is enough to get somebody to heal back to normal. Uh, if it's not a severe disc herniation, you remove the, the underlying cause and then the body simply heals itself with time. Um, that's number one. But sometimes, depending on how bad it is, it's not enough. And I would argue that if we really want to make this person resilient for the future, there's more to it than that. Number two, in a chiropractor's office, or at least in our office, the second thing we would do is spinal decompression. Spinal decompression, what that is, is so basically it's, it's a version of traction, but it's not traction. Um, traction is where you simply, uh, you would stretch the spine uh, in, in one direction where it's almost like stretching you out in a sense, and they hold that position, or like you go inverted or upside down and it holds that position. It's not a hold. The holding, it's a stretch, but that's not going to accomplish the same thing. What decompression does, it mimics, and it's a big word, it mimics imbibition. Imbibition is the medical term that describes how nutrition, blood flow, oxygen get to the center part of the disc. The disc does not have blood vessels, so uh, imbibition is used, which means the pumping action of the joint, which is simply the normal movement of the joint, drives in blood flow, nutrition, oxygen, all the, all the stuff that the disc needs in order to be healthy. So it's movement, to, to simplify, it's movement. Movement creates a pump. The pump is what drives it all in. If your joint or your bone does not move properly, you don't have imbibition, you don't have the pump happening, and so your disc simply will not receive the nutrition it needs to be healthy. Now, we can help that over time through exercise and, and chiropractic, but again, what spinal decompression does, it's very good about creating this artificial pump to exponentially speed up the healing process. And so what it is, you lay on your back, um, you're gonna be hooked up, if it's lower back, for example, you're hooked up to a, a belt that goes around your body that hooks to a computer system that basically pulls and releases, pulls and releases, and creates an artificial pump, stretching, tractioning, but, but back and forth, pulling and releasing to create that pumping action. It drives in nutrition, blood flow, and oxygen for the disc to heal. Um, again, there's, there's a, a lot of ways you can accomplish this, but there's nothing that I know of that'll create such a fast change with the disc health um, because again, you're creating the artificial uh, pump when your body might not be able to move properly on its own yet. Um, so that's number two. If I had a disc issue, it would be chiropractic and decompression as far as treatment goes. The last one, now this one is super important and it's ironic how many patients I describe that need to do this and I tell them this and yet they, they simply choose not to. And that's okay, that is not a judgment. Um, exercise isn't fun for everybody, uh, but it's super important. You have to build tolerance, which is strength, in every range of motion for the joint in question to make sure that it can tolerate daily life. If you only, say you even lift weights, and you only lift weights in a position where you are bracing your core and you don't bend over because you're afraid if you bend, it's gonna, your disc is gonna give out, then you don't have strength in that bent position. Now, fast forward to nighttime, you get home from work and you gotta bend over and pick up a bag of dog food or, or your kids left their clothes on the floor. You're bending in that position, but you don't have strength in that position. That's why you're likely to get hurt when you're bending. It's, it's, simply, it's not because you shouldn't bend, it's because you don't have strength in that bent position. Your body, your body has the ability to get strong 
but it is very specific on how and, 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 and the way that it gets strong. Meaning it will, it will, you will get strong in the angle that you train or you'll get strong in the position that you train. If you never get to that position, you don't have strength in that position. It doesn't matter how strong you are. I know people that can squat five or 600 pounds and if I put them in that very bench position and then loaded their spine, they would, in simple terms, break. Something would give out because they simply don't have strength in that position. They're very strong, but they don't have strength in that position. Now that may be an extreme example and that's why a person like that, they, they can squat, but if they go to do like a, a Jefferson curl, which is holding a weight and curling your body way over, would throw their back into this huge painful loop, they don't have strength in that position. So long story short, for the average person, what does that mean? A basic back extension, which if you're one of my patients, we have this in the office, um, you simply, you, you get on a bench, the bench, I'm gonna use my hand here, the bench will block your legs, you bend your upper body down as far as you can comfortably, and then you bring your upper body back. Now there's a progression to slowly work into that, but once you are comfortable in getting into that position, then we just wanna get there often. So we recommend three sets of 10 reps, full range when you are capable of doing that. And we have a progression to get to that point. Once you can do that, then we would slowly bump up when you're ready. Three sets of 15, three sets of 20, 25. And the max that I would go to is about three sets of 30. To me, that is the goal with body weight, comfortably getting to a full range of motion, three sets of 30. If you do that, you're gonna get a huge back pump in a good way. And that is a very, just that alone is a very resilient back. But to me, I wouldn't stop there. Now, especially if you're an athlete, you need to build strength to, to kind of match your other strength. So body weight alone isn't enough. You have to find a way, once you get to that point, safely and comfortably, add resistance. And so that can mean there's a lot of ways uh, the average person can just hold a plate or a dumbbell to their chest and do the same movement. If you do, then I would drop the reps down, get used to the weight and slowly work the reps back up with the weight. Um, another option is you could, uh, you could hold a dumbbell behind your, behind your head. I've seen people do that. I don't like that. That's not very comfortable. Um, and I've seen athletes put a barbell on their back and do the same thing. And that is a good exercise. Again, I wouldn't recommend the average person doing that, but an athlete um, absolutely could, uh, as long as they had somebody to help them get into position safely. But the point is you have to build strength to build tolerance in all positions. Strength is going to be where you train it. If you never get into that bottom position, you don't have strength in that position and you don't have tolerance. Your back doesn't have tolerance to that position. That is the only way to really help the joint get strong, the disc heal, and to build tolerance for daily life. So guys, again, just rehash three things if you want to help your herniated disc heal and get back to normal function and protect you for the future. Chiropractic done right and done specifically to adjust the joint, get it back to normal function. Spinal decompression to allow that disc to heal, to create that artificial pump, create the, the artificial inhibition to drive in blood flow, oxygen, and nutrition um, into that disc and help it to heal. And then three, we got to stabilize and develop tolerance and strength to that joint by getting into a full range of motion and letting your body feel those motions that you might get into, into, into daily life, um, but you don't ever train it. Guys, I hope this helps. Um, I really can make this a much longer video because there's a lot of details to this. But if you have questions and you're in a place where you're just, you don't know what to do, it doesn't matter if, you're, if you live in Frisco, Texas, I want to help however I can. So leave a question in the comments or you know what, send me a personal message and I'd be glad to answer and I will give you any detail, any information that you, that you possibly might want. Um, let me know. I'd be glad to help. You're welcome.